we have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and after a long rest, it looks like big flare players are coming back. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather over this past week has been a bit on the snoozy side, but it looks like things are beginning to change. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we actually have a coronal hole that looks like it's going to rotate in through the Earth's strike zone in about four or five days, and that could bring us some fast solar wind that could bring aurora down to mid-latitudes. So aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged. We could get a little bit of storming from that. Meanwhile, there haven't been a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk. We do have region 30. 29 that was emerging quite quickly, but then it kind of quieted down. The big player is region 30, uh, 30 and that region actually fired off an, a small M-class flare back on the 10th, and we were help, hoping it was going to give us a lot more fireworks, but thus far it's been a bit quiescent. Meanwhile, though, we're still watching it for big flares, and there could be more where that came from. Also, these regions are boosting the solar flux up. We're back into the 120s for solar flux, and that means amateur radio operators operators and emergency responders, that radio propagation is well into the good range on Earth's day side, and it's definitely going to continue like that over this week and possibly even get better. Now, the only other thing is we've got more regions that are going to rotate into the Earth view. We do have a few filaments that's been firing off, but none of them have been Earth-directed, so we're still kind of in a hurry-up-and-wait mode to see what's going to be rotating on from the Sun's far side. Switching to our m threat meter, as we take a look at our X-ray flux, you can see that over the past week we've had this long, slow climb upward, and that means by proxy the solar flux is also slowly climbing upward. We are now into the triple digits, well into the triple digits for solar flux, and that means radio propagation on Earth's day side is, is actually improving. In fact, this is from region 3030, which actually had, as you can see on the 10th, fired a big M-class flare. It was kind of a bumpy set of flares, kind of a strange set of eruptions. Not really a big solar storm launch though, so we're still keeping our eye on it, but we did get a minor radio blackout. Now these conditions will easily continue. We could get more radio blackouts. We got about a 10% chance of that, so expect that the radio propagation on Earth's day side will stay in the good range, but also expect a bit more noise on the bands as some of these big flare players begin to return. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as we take a look over the past couple weeks, we really haven't seen all that much activity, and this is because we've not had really any Earth-directed solar storms. We've been kind of sitting between quiet conditions and unsettled conditions. In fact, one of the last times we actually bumped up at all was back on the 6th when we had kind of a solar storm graze. It didn't really impact us much because the solar storm missed us, but we had a little bit of fast solar wind as a chaser, and that was able to bump us up to uh, unsettled settled high unsettled conditions in that territory until about the 8th and where things began to kind of quiet back down. Since then we've actually had another little bump up for the same kind of reasons, but really it's not been all that much that's been going on. It's been kind of snoozy, but we might see a change here in about four or five days as some more dedicated fast solar wind should be hitting Earth and it could actually bump us up to active conditions or storm levels and that would be a great boon for aurora ph photographers who are just dying to get some more shots. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo A's view, man, it looks a lot like Earth view, doesn't it? You can see region 3029, 3030, 3031, and that big coronal hole that we're waiting for to rotate into the Earth strike zone. But if you look just past 3030, right on the east limb. Can you see all those little dots there? Those are new regions that are going to be rotating into Stereo's view here over the next few days. It definitely looks like we've got at least two, maybe even three new regions that are going to be rotating into view, and this may be the return of some of those bigger flare players that we've been waiting for. Not sure if they're still going to be big flare players at all, or just going to continue boosting that solar flux, but we're getting excited because man, if you look at the rest of the disk, 
there's just not a lot going on. It's kind of like the sun went back to sleep for a little while. What what happened? Didn't the sun get that memo that solar maximum is supposed to be coming here soon? So while we wait, at least we know that there are new regions that are going to be rotating into view, and that should be uh, good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 14th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, as we expect, things are going to continue to be a bit on the humdrum side, at least for the next three days or so, because we're not expecting any big uh, solar storms or fast wind for that period of time. In fact, our five-day outlooks will look a little bit bland until we get to about midweek. At that time, we're expecting that coronal hole and that fast solar wind to finally hit Earth, and that will bump us up to, to potentially storm levels, especially at high latitudes. We could be expecting up to about a 25% chance of a major storm, so see, expect that starting around Wednesday. Now, mid-latitudes, we're really only sitting at unsettled, maybe even quiet conditions, but a really low chance of activity until about Wednesday. We might see a bit of active conditions, and then by Thursday we should actually get to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. And again, this is because of that fast solar one wind. It could actually bring aurora down to mid-latitudes, but you're just going to have to be patient until about midweek. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, we do have an M-flare player back on the Earth-facing disk. This is region 3030, and it's the reason why we actually do have a little bit of a big flare risk. In fact, NOAA's giving us about a 10% chance over the next three days, and we're going to extend that easily over the rest of this week. And we do have other regions that might be rotating into Earth view that could be flare players as well. So these numbers might actually go up as time goes on. Meanwhile, we actually are staying in the triple digits now, well into the triple digits, and we also are going to see those numbers climb a little bit. And that means solar flux on Earth's day side is creating good propagation for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Expect those conditions to easily continue throughout this week and through next week as well. And now also the radiation storms have definitely not an issue this week. We are back to the D1 normal range, and that is good sailing for everyone, even you frequent flyers and you high-risk passengers. So the space weather this week is beginning to pick up just a little bit. We have a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone, and this means aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you could be in for a show. And even aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, you know, in about four days, kind of start paying attention because we might get aurora dropping to mid-latitudes for a short little while. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, this is also good news for you that we have new regions rotating into Earth view. One of them is a big flare player and has given us a small radio blackout, but luckily it's not too bad right now. So we have that solar flux in the triple digits, but hopefully the noise levels aren't too uh, high for you that you can, it bothers radio propagation all that much. And these conditions should easily continue over the next week and possibly more. Now you GPS users, well, you know, things aren't too bad for you right now. We don't have a big solar storm coming and the solar flux isn't completely off off the charts and neither are the radio blackouts. So, you know, GPS reception, uh, pretty much all over the globe, is going to be maybe a little bit troublesome, but not too bad. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.